Hello again, loyal subjects. I'm Elizabeth. How are you doing today? Today I'm going to be talking about a much-loved novel that I just recently read. Ooh. The Giver by Lois Lowry. The first book in The Giver Quartet. I am holding up my massive bind-up of the four books, so this is going to be fun to hold throughout the whole video. I feel like I'm literally the last person on Earth to read The Giver. But the thing is, here in Australia, this is not on the required reading list. It must be some kind of American classic, because I'd never even heard of it until BookTube, and everybody's saying, oh, it's like my favourite classic, it's my favourite skinny book, that kind of deal. So, since the movie is coming up, I thought I would read it, and I would do a quick review for you all. I kind of feel like I'm preaching to the choir here, because you guys all know more about it than I do. Alright, so The Giver. A dystopian book with a utopian setting. It follows a Eleven named Jonas as he goes through his assignment for his future job of being the receiver of memories. There he meets this man named The Giver, who basically gives him all of the memories of people around the world, including happy memories, sad memories, and painful memories. The community that they live in needs a receiver because they don't want to have to deal with all the harshness of these painful memories. So that's basically all I'm gonna say for non-spoilery parts. Go read it if it sounds interesting to you, and if it doesn't... I, I don't know what to do, man. You, you just go about your life, I guess. I hear chocolate milk is tasty these days. <sighs> when we're getting used to this new setting, it's different from most dystopians. Whereas most dystopians rule based on fear or threats, things like that, this is much different. It's kind of the definition of blissful ignorance. They don't know any better, and they're seriously so clueless to literally everything. Like finding out that each of these family units is composed of two people that get matched together by the elders, and then two kids, a male and a female, that get given to them when they apply. It's kind of like this whole community-wide adoption process which is okay, I suppose, but no one's allowed to have their own kids. I kept thinking to myself, well, what happens if the couple accidentally have a baby? But then I realised that's not going to happen because they don't have sex, because they take pills to get rid of any stirrings, sexual awakening type deals. What the fuck? I mean, it was all pretty messed up. They don't do anything for themselves. Like, they're able to choose which hours they put in their volunteer work, but other than that, everything else is chosen for them by people they hardly know, probably. <sighs> okay, so Jonas gets given the assignment of being the receiver of memories, and straight off the bat, I realised, okay, this is what it's going to be about. He's going to be given all the memories of the world. And just seeing him go through that process of finally knowing what true feelings are like. It just really made me appreciate the freedom that we have to be who we are to a certain extent. And it was just really hard to see him literally carry the weight of the world on his shoulders and knowing that the giver had been doing this for so long. Learning about Rosemary, the last apprentice to the giver. I didn't know that this was his daughter for so long, and when it was finally revealed that, I really felt for the guy. Okay, so we have this whole release business, and right off the bat, you know something is fishy. They release people who break the law. They release people when they get too old to really do anything. They release babies that aren't growing at the right speed. So, when we see that clip that the giver shows Jonas of his dad injecting this newborn baby with this death serum 
and watching the baby die and just get thrown down a garbage chute. Oh, it was really hard to read about. I have read plenty of death in books, you know, it doesn't faze me that much. But when it's a baby, it's like, they literally just got here and they can't do anything to defend themselves. And it, oh, why do people have to kill babies? It sucks. So obviously, I was really happy when Jonas decided to take Gabriel and leg it out of there. I have no idea where this place is that he's gone, but I hope we get to see him again. I hope maybe once everyone in the community has sorted out their shit, Jonas can come back and it'll be sweet. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Alright, that's all I have for you today. I'll be doing a movie review when I go and see that. So look forward to that. I will see you next time. Goodbye.